Hello everybody and welcome to part 13 of our e-commerce website building lesson series. In this one we're going to continue on with our cart display and we're going to make sure we tally the total for what the whole cart is with all of the items combined and before we continue on much further we have to alleviate the cart from double posting items if the user happens to press refresh. Let's go and put this, I'll show you what I mean, I'm going to put this black hat in. I'm going to go back to home and I'm going to put in the black jeans. Now if I was to refresh right now, you see what happens? It's going to try and double post those variables again if the user happens to press refresh when they put something in their cart. Once they get there, if they press refresh, it'll double post the variables. So a quick easy way to alleviate that is use the same method that we used to alleviate that very same problem earlier in this lesson series. So let's go into section one here. If the user attempts to add something to the cart from the product page, that's the section you want to be in. Let's expand that code. And down here, the very last bracket, right before the very last bracket there, or under the second to last bracket, put a line break and put in this code. The exit line isn't really even necessary, but I put it there just through paranoia. I don't know, I'm a weirdo. You don't need that exit line, I don't think. I think header will redirect instantly and not let the page run further. So basically what you're doing is you're putting in the header function which is the same thing that we did in the admin center when we didn't want double posting of the inventory items when the admin was loading store items into the system. Now it's about time that we tally up the cart total don't you think? Well, we can display a little message down here to the user what their cart total is. So what you do is you go into your cart.php file and here in section 3 we're going to use this existing code that renders the cart for user to view on page to work up the total of the entire cart. So the first thing you want to do is right under where we initialize the cart output variable we're going to initialize a cart total variable. This way we don't get errors on the page and that variable you want to display down on the page somewhere go to design view and just for right now I'm going to put it here on the bottom. I'm going to go into the code view again and right here I'm going to echo that variable to the page. Now remember right here where we tallied up the price total for each item? We're going to add one more line of code under that. Right before we start outputting that dynamic table row we have. And the line is cart total equals price total plus cart total. Now some of you guys looking at that might understand exactly how it's working and what it's doing but for those of you who don't I'll try and explain it. Cart total is just the variable container that we want to hold each item in as it comes through. So in order to make the cart total variable remember the price of the item that was put in before you simply put price total plus cart total. So when the first item comes through it's 499 so it's going to be price total plus zero because cart total has nothing in it yet. Remember it's an empty variable. The second time it runs through for the second item it's going to be price total which is maybe 499 for that item plus 499 or whatever the amount was for the first item in the cart. The price total for the first item in the cart is going to get compounded to the price total for the second item in the cart. Same for the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth and it's just blah 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 on like that. Let's see if that works. Let's FTP this up. Let me press my cart here, see if we get a rendering. Yes, 1996. And that's exactly how much that would be because there's four items. Well, there's a black hat with a quantity of two, so that makes 998 plus 499 and another 499 makes 1996. And to get a dollar sign on that, you can take that variable at the very end of the loop. After everything's finished processing, you can put cart total is equal to double quote, double quote, period, and that variable. Put a dollar sign right here in between your double quotes. Let's FTP that. And there you go. Now you got a dollar sign right there in front of the 1996. And if you wanted a USD, you just put period double quote double quote on the end there space USD for US dollars if you are happen to be using US dollars. 
So there you see, the cart total will be 1996 US dollars. And actually you could put in front of that dollar sign, cart total, little semicolon, and then the number will be there. Let me FTP that. And there you have it. It says cart total 1996 US dollars. If I empty my cart, we don't see that at all. All right, so here is really not the most ideal place you want to put that. I'm going to put mine in a div that's right under the dynamic table. And my div is going to be aligned to the right. So all the text will be aligned to the right, so it'll show somewhere here for the cart total. And I may make that text a little bit bigger. Okay, so in part 14, the next video, I'll show you guys how you can make this X enabled to where it removes the item from the cart, just that one item. No matter how many they have as quantity, they can press X and remove that item from cart. So we'll enable that in the next part of this video series. Now, I know a lot of people have questions about letting the user adjust quantity. Some people are suggesting to have it on this page. I don't think that would be the smartest way to go. Really, no matter what the quantity is, you want to give them the ability to adjust the quantity in the cart because that's the way I've you know I've used a lot of carts online and that's the way most of them work that I can see in the actual cart is where you can update the quantity that you want so having it actually on the page here with it is not really even necessary you can add it if you want but it's not even really necessary because at the cart is where you would give them the ability to adjust their quantity and then retally the form and I might even show you guys how to do it using JavaScript to where right when they adjust the quantity input field, the whole cart will retally itself. But I'm not making any promises, but I just wanted to let you guys know that the way I'm going to do it is give the user the ability to adjust the quantity for each item within the cart. Because that's the way I've seen most online shopping cart mechanisms work. Okay, so stay tuned for part 14 where we enable removal of items from the cart and we may even get into adding the little form needed in the quantity box here which will be just a little input text field you basically just take this number and you dynamically insert it by default into that field give them the ability to change that number